Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part two of this swing arm service. We've got some parts back from the, the dealership. Um, we've got this internal spacer or internal um, seal should I say. And we've got the bearing. The out, outside seal was okay, so I didn't bother buying that because they're a bit expensive, to be honest. The bearing is fair enough. It's, I think it was about £8.50. Uh, I think the seal was about £8.20, which is a lot of money for a bit of plastic. And the other one was very similar. I could have got these cheaper somewhere else, but in the end, but I mean, I messed about. There was, there was no point bothering. There is a nice website called, uh, I think it's called Simply Bearing to sell things like this. I could have saved a couple of quid by buying them from there, but it wasn't worth bothering. When I was looking at the parts diagram for um, for these bits, it's surprising how expensive some of them are. Like, for instance, this here, which is like the, uh, the outside cover. It's just a decorative cover. It's a nice bit of aluminium, and it was I think it's only listed at about £5 something, £5.75, I think. That little screw, that little nut, I think was about £3.50. Even more surprising, this little bit of spacer, which is basically a bit of rubber tubing, was £11.14. pence. I have no idea where they get these prices from. It's just a bit of breather tubing. But anyway, let's crack on. Okay, so we're going to try and put the bearing back in using a similar method to the way we brought it out. Um, on other bearings, like I've done wheel bearings and headstock bearings, you can tap them in with a hammer. But this looks a lot more fragile than uh, a headstock bearing. So I'm going to try and pull it through um, as I did when we took it out. You're going to have to try a slightly different method than putting that in there because that will just pull back through and I can't get anything bigger in there. So what I think we're going to have to do is put that in there to then just brace the um, the threaded bar on. So let's, let's have a go at that. Okay, so we're going to put the seal in first, which I've lightly greased. I think warming this seal in hot water might be a good idea. So I've lightly greased the bearing. It had grease in it already, but I put a little bit more on just in case. Started off with a hammer. Okay, see if we can pull it through.
snapping sound was the tip of my pliers breaking off. Okay, so it wasn't having very much success with the threaded bar, purely because the way it was in there it was coming to a bit of an angle and it was pulling the bearing to one side. So what I've done now, I've sacrificed this G clamp by cutting the end off it, so I can slot it into this little gap, like that, and hopefully then just screw this down. And I'm putting an oversized socket over here, so it spreads the, the weight a bit more evenly, and then I'll put the, the other one back on. side as well. Hammer. It's not going in too bad with this, to be honest. I just didn't want to be too forceful, you know. as far as it'll go with that okay with a bearing in i'm just going to pop the seal in and to be perfectly honest i don't think hitting the bearing in was the best thing to do in hindsight i would have uh, taken it to maybe to a machine shop and got it pressed in but it all seems to be working so Let's see how it goes okay so a bit of a change of plan i've taken the bearing back out um even though it seemed to be turning okay by hitting it in, which I was not keen on doing anyway, um, I think I managed to bend the inner ray slightly so you could feel it on the inside. Um, when I put the sleeve back in, you could hear it grinding on the outside. It was making little scuff marks. So don't hit the bearing in. I wasn't keen on doing it to start with. So we're going to have to try and persevere with this. Now... What I've done instead, this won't go all the way through the swing arm, so I've got another bolt, which I'm going to put on there. 
and then I'm going to attach them together and then I'll have a slightly longer bolt. Let's give that a go. Thankfully I didn't damage the, uh, the new inner seal. Okay, so now I'm a bit longer. Let's give this a go. I don't, I'm going to try not to hit this one at all. Now in an ideal world, we'd all know somebody who had a bear impress. This goes in relatively straight. quite nicely now. So I should have persevered with that and come up with this idea to begin with, but hey ho, it's just cost me the price of another bearing. As I say, you live and learn. Okay, now I'm going to put this bearing in, this uh, socket on now, which is much, much bigger. And being a little bit more careful with this one because the inner seal is on the inside you could end up compressing it too much i think if it was just going metal against metal it wouldn't matter good that seems far enough in cool Okay, so if you've got the instinct to tell you not to hit something in, don't hit it in. So just before we get it back together, I'm just going to show you a little mark there, I don't know if you can see it. Now that was already on there when I took it out, that was on the inner side. So I'm not sure if, like I say, the, um, the bearing was snagging. I'm not sure if you'll pick that up on the camera. There's no lip there or anything, it just looks like it's scuffed a little bit. I'll just give that a little wipe down with some uh, very fine wet and dry and we'll stick it back in. Okay, here we go, reassembly. Okay, so I think this is going to be the diff most difficult bit is getting the swing arm back in or more so the chain back in. So as I showed you when I took it off originally, I had to come out at an angle. So I've just got to try and get the chain just through this little gap here. And I hope you can see what's going on there.
one too bad. You've got to kind of put it in and turn it flat and then drag it through if you like. A bit fiddly. Okay, now talking about fiddly, I've got to try and get this bloody screw back in here. Give me a bit of a nuisance. Just going to try and put the swing arm bolt back in to try and support the swing arm for me. screw in it's a bit fiddly it did have some thread block on it which I've again put some on Easier getting it in because I've cleaned the thread lock off, so hopefully it won't take as long as it did before. I'm sure there's a torque setting for these, but I have no idea what it is. I can't be bothered to find out. It's a little tweak as you're going into aluminium. Now the observant amongst you might have thought I left the spacer out. Which I did. There's just about enough room I think for me to get in there. manual now says to wind the uh, spacer back in on the right hand side. Now I did make my own tool as you've probably seen in the last video but since then I bought the original one. They're not particularly expensive even from the Ming dealer I think I was about 26 quid. I think I had it for about 16 pound from a company called um, GB Products I think it's called. I'll put a link in the description below. And it's free postage as well, which is good. So you've got to pop that through just to hold it in place and then you push it back slightly. So your tool goes in there. And then you tighten it up to the correct torque setting, which I'll find that out in a second. So this is only six Newton meters. I have remembered the spacer on the other side. your spindle right through okay and the swing arm spindle net is 110 newton meters but remember to check your own settings for your own bike just make sure everything moves as it should. So I've started um, a reassembly underneath. So I've put the uh, hoses under there and the little um, covers there. 
Now when I did it, I raised it up and I tied it up. And I didn't realize that that scuff in the swing arm, so be careful. I'm gonna give it a gentle little scuff, but uh, it is annoying, so put a rag on it. Then you can raise it up as much as you want to there. Because unfortunately the heel plate uh, damaged it. It's only a little tiny scuff, but hey. Uh, okay, let's get the suspension on. Let's try and get the suspension linkage in. Right, <clears throat> okay, we'll just talk all those up before I forget. Okay, to make it nice and easy, all the torque settings on this are 48 Newton meters please check your own settings. It doesn't mean it's going to be the same on your bike. This is for a 2016 Speed Triple R. Right, so I've already put the uh, plastics back on. You don't need to see any of that. That's quite straightforward. So you might find it a bit easier. If you get a screwdriver like that, just give it a little tap to go in there, just to widen it out a little bit. And I have greased this up with copper grease. There was quite a lot on the outside. There wasn't so much on the inside, and I think that's where you really need it. Uh, by spreading it out like that, hopefully most of it won't rub off. Yeah, that goes in a lot easier. Nice and smooth. And you can just pop that out. Okay, 
things. We just need to get this on. So it just fits over like that. Just going to put some grease again, a little bit of copper grease on the inside here. trying to get the circuit clip back on. I'm not sure if there's a specific way to go back on where there's a front or back side so I'm just putting it back on the way it was. Make sure it's seated properly. Just gonna have a clean around now to get rid of some of the excess copper grease. Okay, let's get the disc and the hub back on. There's a little washer there that needs to go over. tightened up again later when the bike is on the ground let's try and get the brakes on This caliper is 40 newton meters. OK, 
Okay, the ABS sensor. The torque setting for this is nine Newton meters. Okay, remember as well, you've got to check your ABS gap. Which I'll probably do after I've tightened everything up. Right, it's just the wheel now, I think. Just remember to space up first. And the little thin washer. And then your conical washer spacer. And then the nut. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Make sure you go around the, your work and check it. I'm just going to put the exhaust back on, which you don't need to watch. And then we'll get the bike on the ground and torque these up. So these are 146 Newton meters. Okay, and remember to restake the nut. Again, the same on this side, 146 Newton meters. So that wasn't a particularly difficult job, it's just a bit time consuming with a lot of stripped down and parts to take off. Now there's no specific service interval for the swing arm, you just do it as and when you feel you should. Now in hindsight I probably wouldn't have bothered with this bike, it's quite low mileage although there was one slightly grumbly bearing. But if your bike is kept outdoors or it's high mileage or you feel there's something not right uh, then you may want to do it. Apart from that I probably wouldn't have bothered. So if you like that video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.